الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وآله وصحبه أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters, my dear children, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is our second Friday, the holy month of Ramadan this year. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us whatever sort of ibadah we have been doing in the last eight days. And may Allah make us live until the end of Ramadan, inshaAllah. And accept from us. We'll continue our talk today regarding the virtues of Ramadan and the deeds done during it. You may recall last week the first hadith I, or the last hadith I read on Abi Hurairah and the Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal. Lama hadara Ramadan, when Ramadan came, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave a speech informing people of the arrival of a blessed month. قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ شَهْرٌ مُبَارَكٌ A blessed month has arrived, has come to you. افْتَرَضَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمْ صِيَامًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained on you to fast it. تُفَتَّحُ فِيهِ أَبْوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ The gates of paradise, the gates of heaven will be opened. وَتُغْلَقُ فِيهِ أَبْوَابُ الْجَحِيمِ And the gates of the hellfire will be closed. They are all metaphorical things. You see, when you think about what's the meaning of the gates of Jannah will be opened, the gates of the hellfire will be closed. As if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, any good deed you do during this month, it doesn't matter how small, how trivial you think, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept it. And when the gates of the hellfire are closed during this month, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would overlook and forgive some of the sins we are doing, provided we have sincere repentance and we have the intention of abstaining from doing them. So think about it. This is a month during which all the good deeds will be, the reward of the good deeds will be increased in this month. And if we have been doing something wrong during the whole year, the time has come for us to stop, to say sorry, to repent, to adjust our conduct, to say sorry to everyone around us. If you haven't been talking to your wife or to your brother or your sisters or your neighbors or your children, start new page in the book of repentance and say sorry and adjust your conduct. And believe me, inshallah, Allah will accept it and you will have peace within and peace around you. وَتُغَلُّ فِيهِ الشَّيَاطِينَ Satans will be chained. And as I mentioned last week, there are different types of Satan. There are Satans among the human beings themselves. Shayateen al-Ins wal-Jinn. So among the human beings there are Shayateen as well. If you say, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيَاطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ The Satan from the Jinn will disappear. But the Satan from the human being will not disappear. It is your conduct which will stop such a thing. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, وَتُغَلُّ فِيهِ الشَّيَاطِينَ Satan will be chained. Not your Satan. So not be chained. You chain your own Satan by fasting. You are the one who will be in control of your Satan during this month. فِيهِ لَيْلَةٌ خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ شَهْرٌ In it, there is a night which is better than 1,000 months. 1,000 months. It's about, what, 83 years, 84 years? What is that night? Laylatul Qadr. Laylatul Qadr is mentioned in the Quran in two places. Can someone remind me of the first place? Where is it? Inna anzalnahu fi Laylatul Qadr. The second one? Surah Al-Fu, exactly. Al-Dukhan, yes? Inna anzalnahu fi Laylatul Mubaraka. So Layla Mubaraka. Man hurima khayraha faqad hurim. Whoever is deprived of its good is really deprived of something great. So psychologically, we are all preparing ourselves for Laylatul Qadr, one of the last ten nights of the month. 
whether it's the 27th or the 26th or the 25th or the 23rd or 21st or 29th, this is all irrelevant. The beauty of it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concealed it in a way that we have to work so hard in the last 10 nights hoping that one of them will be later to inshallah. So be prepared from now. If you are taking annual leave, think about it from now. Is it a good idea? The night is very short. SubhanAllah, by the time we break the iftar, we have our iftar, the night finished. Go on. So make an effort, please, during the last 10 nights of Ramadan to stay up all night from sunset until dawn. Not watching uh, soaps and, and watching football and watching games. No, no, no. No, no. You will spend these few hours. Let's say from quarter past nine to quarter to three, for the sake of argument, you are going to spend them in prayers, in reading the Quran. Nothing else, no gossip, no chatting. You are not going to have a party. No, no. The last 10 nights of Ramadan must be fully dedicated to the service of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We must make an effort from now to plan how are we going to cope with the last 10 nights of Ramadan. This hadith was reported by Ahmad and Nasa'an al Bayhaq. In another hadith, the Prophet said, in addition to the first part, and angel will call. Ya bari al khayri abshir. O you who intend to, go, to do good deeds, have glad tidings. وَيَا بَاغِ الشَّرِّ أَقْسِرْ O you who intend to do evil, refrain, stop! حَتَّى يَنْقَدِ رَمَضَانِ Until the end of Ramadan. رَاهُ أَحْمَدُ وَالنَّسَائِ وَسَلَدُ الْجَلِ The Prophet ﷺ in, in another hadith in Muslim, Sahih Muslim, he said, الصلاوات الخمس, the five daily prayers, والجمعة إلى الجمعة, Friday to Friday, وَرَمَضَان إلى رَمَضَان, and the Ramadan. Fasting the month of Ramadan from one month to the next, from one year to the next year. Mukaffiratun lima baynahunna ida jtunibatil kabair. They are expiations of all that happened during that period. As long as the major sins are being avoided completely. So Allah will forgive all the other sins. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, Ramadan Whoever fast Ramadan, obeying all of its limitations, whilst guarding himself against what is forbidden, has in fact atoned or made amends for any sins he committed before that. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, Man sama Ramadana imanan wahtisaba. Imanan with, with faith. Whoever fasts Ramadan with true faith, wahtisaba, he is expecting the reward from Allah for the sake of Allah, with faith, and, and seeks Allah's pleasure and reward. All his past sins will be forgiven. So we are all embarking on a month where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is welcoming any sort of good deeds, any kind deeds, any charity, any extra form of worship. Something you were not used to do during the normal times, the other times outside Ramadan. Now we are doing it. Reading more Quran during the month of Ramadan and trying to understand. It's not the volume, it's not the quantity. Please remember this. It's not the quantity. How much you would read, it's how much would you understand and how much would you apply from what you have understood. And when, while you are fasting spiritually, you accept more Quran and you enjoy listening to it and reading it, and you also enjoy trying to understand the meanings of the verses, and sometimes new meanings would hit you, something new you never 
thought of it before, but while you are fasting, spiritually you are able to receive more information and more guidance, inshallah. I saw, I met some people yesterday, uh, and they were not fasting. And I was very upset, actually, and I said, why you are not fasting? You are a very young man, and uh, he gave excuse which were not acceptable. You see, we we'll read together what when you are allowed not to fast, but uh, we have also to understand that if you miss one day in Ramadan with no excuse, it will not be enough for you to fast the rest of your life. That's what the Prophet ﷺ told us. من أفطر يوما بالرمضان في غير رخصة رخصة الله له. If anyone will not fast one day in Ramadan without having a license which is permitted by Allah, لم يقضي عنه صيام الدهر كله وإن صار. It will not be able, even if he decides to fast the rest of his life, it's not even enough. What are the essential elements of the fast? What are the essential elements of the fast? Two elements. Arkan saw. What are Arkan saw? Attention. Attention. Exactly. And niya. Do I have to say it loud? Do I have to say, Allahumma inni nawaitu sawm al ghad? Do I have to, oh Allah, I have the intention of fasting? No. It is, where is the intention? In the heart. Just by getting up to have your sahur, this is intention, okay? So you don't have to say it loudly. <clears throat> and what is the other ruk? Ruk, you know what's the meaning of ruk? If it collapses, it's a pillar. It's, if it collapses, then the whole thing crumbles, okay? Ruk, what is the other ruk? We have niya, we have niya. And what should we do? We should, exactly, absolutely, very good. Well, so we abstain from the three things, food, drink, and fulfillment of any sexual desire. So I looked it up in the Oxford Dictionary, and this is very interesting, very interesting. Fast, abstain from all or some kinds of food as religious observance or in sign of mourning. Go without food, act of fasting, season or day appointed for fast, etc. So the fast as defined in the Oxford Dictionary is only abstaining from food. And that's why when you are talking to a non-Muslim and you say to him or her, I am fasting. Oh, but surely you can drink. No, no, no. Even you can't drink. You see, so because this is the definition in the English language. That fasting in the English language just fasting from food. But we talk about nil from the mouth, as, as if someone is in hospital and on the door is written a big sign, nil. Right. So we know now the two essential uh, elements of the fast. We said aniyya, and then abstaining from food, drink, and fulfillment of any sexual desires. Now, who is supposed to be fasting? It's ordained, yes, on who? You have to be healthy, you have to be a resident, muqeem, you have to be sane or insane? Sane? Yes? So, and of course, for women, they have to be not in the state of, of uh, post-childbirth bleeding or, or they having their period. Another concern regarding young children. Forcing your young children to fast. I mentioned this last week. Some teachers, they call me, I'm, I'm actually chaplain, to force the school and concerned about little children going to school fasting and of course they we cannot force the children uh, we cannot force our children who did not reach the age of puberty to fast <coughs> you can't you have no right to do that you are the yes you have no right you cannot force a child who is seven eight nine ten years old to fast they haven't reached the age of puberty yet and when they reach the age of puberty Again, in Islam, you cannot force people or compel people to do anything, even your own children. If the child, you have to encourage the children to fast. You have to encourage the children to pray. No physical punishment is allowed. You cannot beat up your child because he is not fasting. You can't do that. It has to be from here. 
So you need to explain to the school if, you, if the child is, let's say, 12 years old, he's strong, he wants to fast, he wants to fast, he's happy to fast. Okay, put the sandwich in his bag and say to him, if you feel hungry, eat your sandwich because he would have missed the uh, food time at school. And communicate with the teachers, go to the school and tell the teacher, look, my son is 12 years old or my daughter is nine years old and she's willing to fast. And if they feel tired or they feel hungry, they have the sandwich in the bag or the drink in the bag, they can eat or drink. So you cover yourself because today the school would regard you as a, a, a fanatic, as a militant, they report you to prevent. You know, you know what we are going through now. So we have three questions which we ask every year, just to remind ourselves. Firstly, those who are permitted not to fast, but must pay a ransom for not fast. يرخص لهم في الفطر ويجب عليهم القضاء. Who is allowed not to fast? He is permitted not to fast at all. But he must pay a ransom for not fast. Chronically, someone terminally ill, someone chronically ill, there is no way he can fast. So what he should do? He should feed a number of poor people equal to the number of the days he could not fast. <coughs> Who else? Old age. old age, someone very old, very feeble, he cannot fast. He finds it extremely impossible to fast. Okay? And who else? Traveling? No, but th no, no, this is this is this is the traveling will come into number three. Okay, number two. Okay. Uh, Suppose someone is doing hard labor, someone is asphalting the roads now in the month of June, July in, in Pakistan, in Karachi, and it is so hot. Is he allowed? Yes. Yes. Because he hasn't got any other mean for uh, earning his, 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 uh, his daily bread. How much you can pay? Well, we are talking, if, if you are feeding one person, we are talking this year about five pounds. Five pounds would be enough to feed one person. Yes. No, no, one meal. One meal. As we said regarding the oath, when you break your oath, you have to feed a number of poor people. You remember the ten people to clothe them or to feed them? It has to be from the same quality of food you eat. Okay, so five pounds. What, what do you think? Five pounds is reasonable to feed yeah. someone today? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, five pounds is reasonable. Yeah, yeah. I've got a question. Yes, five. is the category you mentioned uh, sick, uh, terminally sick, and the old people don't need to eat their feather and stuff? Yes, but in Bangladesh, some people are poor. In no, that I, that, yes, that I was just going to come. You see, this is subhanallah. Thanks for reminding me. Thank you. Then they don't do it. He doesn't fast. You see, this is the beauty of Islam. When we come to Salah prayers, no excuse. Okay, no excuse. When it comes to Salah, no excuse. Whether you are ill or traveling or fighting in a battlefield, you have to pray. There are different forms of praying. You have to pray. No excuse. When it comes to the zakah, you have no money, you don't pay the zakah. When it comes to hajj, you have no money, you have no help, you don't go. When it comes to fasting, you can't fast, and you haven't got the means to pay the poor, and you don't. <coughs> this is from the mercy of God. Thanks for reminding me. Thank you. So we said the first group, all the people, people are chronically ill, not expected to recover. People are doing hard labor, very, very, very difficult jobs, working in the mines down there, maybe <coughs> asphalting the roads in the summer. You see, it's very interesting because in here it says, it never been mentioned in the Sunnah how much you should pay. You have to use your common sense in the sense of what is going on, what we call it al-urf, what's going on in the country you live in. Maybe five pounds here is enough. Maybe five pounds in another country is not enough. Right, so that was the first group. Those who are allowed, they are permitted not to fast at all, but they must pay a ransom. Uh, 
what about the, there is also something about women who are breastfeeding and pregnant women and there are two opinions and it's very interesting according to Ibn Umar and Ibn Abbas if a pregnant woman or a woman who is breastfeeding a baby is worried about the child they have the right not to fast but they pay the fidya they pay the ransom and they don't have to make up the days this is the opinion of Ibn Umar and Ibn Abbas so this is there is a lot of, of, of mercy in this actually according to uh, Abu Hanifa and Abu Ubaid and Abi Thawr they can make up the days and they don't have to, fo to, to feed anybody they don't have to pay the price the second group who is allowed not to fast but they must make up the days the one you see you said previously traveling if you are traveling and people will always ask about traveling 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 for pleasure is it okay traveling for business any sort of traveling exactly Allah did not specify the process Allah did not specify uh, uh, what type of traveling distance should we say the distance of Qasr would allow you not to fast you see we, we sometimes people find excuses not to fast <coughs> distance of, of traveling uh, of Qasr is 80 kilometers 50 miles but really if I drive from here to Oxford uh, have a business to do today and I come back the same day am I allowed really you have to think about it. It's, it's Actually, when you leave the country, it's an example, I'm going in America, I'm leaving here, and five hour difference, my five hour fasting go longer, then... Uh, this, is, this is a very good example, because yes. you, are, you are flying with the sun, you are traveling with the sun yes. all the time, yes. so the day is getting very long, and you have the right not to fast. I, I remember the days when I was going for Umrah in Ramadan, and we, we are in the haram, clothing on the plane, and the man next to me is eating, and I'm not eating. I have no right to say to him, excuse me, you can't do that, because he has the right, and he has no right to say to me, why you are not breaking your fast? Because, <coughs> there is a hadith, وَقَدْ كَانَ بَعْضُ الصَّحَابَ يَصُومُ عَلَىٰ عَهْدِ رَسُولِ وَسَلَّمُ وَبَعْضُهُمْ يَفْتَرَةً During the time of the Prophet, some people would break the fast, and some people would fast, while they are traveling with the Prophet. And a man said to the Prophet Sallallahu Hamza al-Aslami, O Prophet of Allah, I find that I have enough strength and I like to fast. <laughs> Would there be any blame upon me? So the Prophet Sallallahu said, Hiya rukhsa min Allahi Ta'ala. It is a concession from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. فَمَنْ أَخَذَ بِهَا فَحَسَنْ Whoever will take it, it is good. وَمَنْ أَحَبَّ أَنْ يَصُومْ فَلَا جُنَاحَ عَلَيْهِ And whoever would like to, to fast, there is no blame on him. رواه مسلم. حديث صحيح in Muslim. Yes, it happened during the time of the Prophet ﷺ. Traveling with the Prophet ﷺ, some people decide not to fast, some people decided to fast. And this man asked him this question, he said, I can fast, <coughs> alhamdulillah, I am healthy, I'm strong. But your example is very valid, very good, because there is a lot of burden. You are adding to the hours of the day you are used to. Suppose someone is healthy. He went to see his GP and the GP said, I am a little bit concerned about your kidneys because the day is very long. I think it's better for you not to fast during this time, but you fast in the winter. Yes. Day yes. Is a difficult day than a long day is no difficult. I'm fasting there, even to have a diabetes problem. Yeah. But my diabetes is more better in the in the longer days. In longer day. Fine. Than shorter fine. day. Fine. Fine. You see, that's why Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala rewards everyone according to his capability or his ability to fast. We are individuals. And this religion is so beautiful. It is tailored to suit every one of us. If you can't pray, 
normal prayer, you pray sitting, you pray standing. If you can't fast, you have the right not to fast and make it up in the time when it is shorter. You have the right. <coughs> so the first group, we understood those who are permitted not to fast, but must pay a ransom for not fasting. The second group, those who are permitted not to fast, but later they must make up the days they missed. And you said traveling is one of them. Second one is temporary illness. Someone had even toothache and he had to go to the dentist and he had to have an extraction. He's in terrible pain. He has the right. Who decides? He decides. He decides. And we spoke about the pregnant women and breastfeeding women as well. And no blame on you if you decide to fast while you are uh, traveling. <coughs> Acceptable. Right. And the, the final group, those who must not fast, not allowed to fast, and must make up the mistakes. Who? Women. Yes, women. yes, exactly. Women during the period, they must. I'm not allowed to fast. And also post childbirth bleeding. A woman delivered a child today. She has 40 days from the time she delivered <coughs> the child. So she doesn't fast. But they must make up the days. And the warning is always like that. Do not wait for the next Ramadan to come before paying your debt. It's a debt. You have to pay it. The sooner you, you do it, the better. So, okay, fine, let's wait until the winter. You don't even have to fast the seven days or the 30 days in case of a woman who delivered the baby. Continuously, you can fast one week, one day on, one, one day off, two days this week, three days next week. But you must, women must make an effort, please. Also, men who missed any days because of they've been traveling or they actually, uh, not 12. I think I'm okay. I, I'm going to stop here and next week, inshallah, we'll, we'll talk about the manners of fasting, the etiquettes of fasting, and uh, what is permissible during the fast and what is not permissible during the fast, inshallah. Uh, today we have two boxes, boxes for zakat, other boxes And don't forget about zakat or fit, please. Please, please, the cattle fit. The cattle fit. We need to be ready so we can send it to the people who are in, in, in need. If you go to Elford, yes, you break your fast. It's a different thing. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Brian, tell me, why, why are you there? Did she kick you again? Poor man. You fall on the money. You remember, brother, Ibrahim, in our God, please? Allah, 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 Allah,